was told by, you know, like my family, my culture that mm -hmm. it wasn't sustainable and I need to get a real job. Yep. Or authentic accents authentic only. Authentic accents only. Mm -hmm. I feel like we always have like a, a mini versions of our parents like in oh. our head all oh, the yeah, time. Oh yeah, completely. Just completely annoying. Like, can you quiet down please? Mm -hmm. After a hundred plus years of Filipinos being here, they finally see us as a culture. I was, you know, this little Asian girl. It was in a town where I was like one of the only Asian mm -hmm. people. I wasn't allowed to be Asian. And if we don't say yes to ourselves, nobody else is gonna say yes to us. Hi, my name is Jenny Okabori. I'm a voice actress. I'm Japanese American, and you may know me for my roles like Yoimiya in Genshin Impact, uh, Kumiko Albertson, and other characters from The Simpsons, and Kuromi and Cinemoral from Hello Kitty and Friends Super Cute Adventures. Hi, I'm Xanthi Huen. I am Vietnamese and Chinese American. I have been in Persona 5 as Haru Okumura, uh, in Fire Emblem Three Houses as Marianne, and Lady Dragon in Miraculous Ladybug Shanghai. Hi everybody, I'm Retna and I'm Thai, Chinese and Filipino. Um, you might know me as Yaimiko from Genshin Impact, Leone from Fire Emblem Three Houses, and um, a, many voices in Tresse, the first Filipino anime on Netflix. So representation these days is extremely important as it always has been, and what we're seeing is a huge wave of increased representation, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so as fellow Asian Americans, what inspired you guys to get into acting? Wow. You want to start with I, this? I mean, I'll start. I, I will actually admit that I have wanted to be an actor since I was probably a very young child. And I was very heavily discouraged from becoming an actor, both by my parents and my culture, but also just because when I was growing up, the only representation I saw was The King and I, Flower Drum Song, and, you know, sidekicks with broken English. Yeah. And so my examples were not that robust and they made me feel uncomfortable. And then I, I just kind of stayed away from it. It took me a while to come back to this, I think because as we started getting more representation and I will give all credit to Queen Sandra Oh, um, because I started seeing her in things like Arliss and like kids shows and then she got Grey's Anatomy and she was playing real people with real stakes, and it wasn't about her being Asian, and it wasn't about broken English, it was just about her being in the moment and real, and I thought, oh my God, we can do this. <laughs> I can now think about this again, and so when I, you know, I had a corporate career before I became an actor, when I was deciding what I wanted to do, if I wasn't gonna do corporate, it immediately sparked in my head, oh, I can do this now. There's, there are more places for me to play, there are more opportunities for me to play, and I can, I can go, let me try. So that's what got me there. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Wow. Yeah, very <laughs> eloquently put. How do I follow that? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, for me, I, acting was something that I was interested in and I wanted to pursue like when I was, uh, like I started in like theater, like in like middle school and high school and going into college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I felt like, um, like everybody else does, I mean, it's already a really difficult industry to get into mm -hmm. as an actor, like especially if you want to do it on camera. Mm -hmm. And um, I figured that because it would be so hard and especially like the roles I felt like for Asians would mm -hmm. be very limited, yeah. um, that I would go into production. So I went to school like just not being open-minded to like working in other areas but then um, I discovered voice acting, and you know, you, I figured with voice acting, it'd be a lot more open because mm -hmm. um, you don't have. It doesn't matter. It doesn't what matter you look what like. you look like. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do feel like you know, it, it's different nowadays with the climate, with like trying to, um, trying to get more um, authentic casting and yeah. diversity. That it's uh, actually. It's a, it's a weird balance to mm -hmm. be like I want to be everything, but also like I feel like it's also important to play uh, roles that are um, authentic, authentic to your experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like you, Retina, I mean, I've wanted to be an actor for as long as I can remember. I think I was three years old when it really just sort of like hit me. My mom took me to see a Broadway show and I just remember like, that's one of my earliest memories is that mm -hmm. I was just like looking up at the stage and just everything all at once just hit me and it's like, this is what I want to do. This is the most important thing in the world to me. This is everything mm -hmm. to me. And then I spent the rest of my life trying to fight that feeling 
and trying to deny that part of me because it was I was told it was like unreasonable it was mm -hmm. just unrealistic that there was no way I could make a living doing it um I was told by you know like my family and my culture that mm -hmm. it wasn't sustainable and I need to get a real job yep. so I always wanted to pursue acting I think I just it's more like my journey where I finally decided to actually do it and decided to allow myself to act. Yeah. I feel like for all of us, you have to give yourself permission mm -hmm. to play because everybody else has said no. Yes. And so you, somebody has to say yes. Mm -hmm. And if we don't say yes to ourselves, nobody else is going to say yes to us. Yeah, I spent so much of my life trying to just fight that urge. I wanted to do anything besides acting, or at least that's how I was trying to convince myself. I wanted to be, you know, like a surgeon, a teacher, mm -hmm. a zoologist, mm -hmm. like anything. I wanted to be in like theme park creative, mm -hmm. a pyrotechnician, right? <laughs> just literally anything. And I just tried to fight that side of myself so hard. And then finally I realized that there was no point in fighting anymore and I should just be who I want to be. Mm -hmm. It's so freeing when you finally do that too. Mm -hmm. Comparing the landscape between from when you first started until now, mm -hmm. how would you compare um, the opportunities that you've gotten in that span, like from when you started and, and now? Do you want to go? Night and day. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, when I first decided to like pursue acting, I was doing like I started on camera mm -hmm. and it was really, really disheartening. And I became like, it was a really depressing part of my life because it was just being told over and over and over again every single day that I was only one specific thing. And then if I wasn't a specific type of Asian femininity, then I didn't fit into yep. it and they didn't want to represent me, that they only wanted to show a certain type mm -hmm. of Asian woman. And it's either she's being fetishized or being made fun of. And it was those two options and I wasn't able to fit into either of those boxes. Yeah. And it felt just so isolating, especially as um, I'm already mixed. And so it's hard for me to like figure out like, growing up a place where uh, whether I fit in the American culture or my Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. And so dealing with that experience was just so, so disheartening. It felt so just awful. And then flash forward to now where it's so much more diverse in the opportunities that I'm able to get, like the characters that I'm able to read for have lives and they have wants and they have desires and they're not just a punchline. They actually have like entire like dimensions to them yeah, they're, they're real they're real and they're someone that you know they remind you of yourself or your friend mm -hmm. or your sister or someone that you bumped into on the street like it's no longer just a two-dimensional image which is ironic because because that's what considering we our line of work <laughs> but it, it's like yeah they're the most three-dimensional 2d images that are, that there are I and that it doesn't have to be about them being asian anymore which is very exciting and i'm just seeing i mean we obviously will still get those opportunities opportunities where it's like Asian schoolgirl number three please read and just giggle and I'm like yes <laughs> or authentic accents only. authentic accents only <laughs> light Japanese accent and I'm like what does that mean that doesn't mean anything thank you that doesn't mean anything that's what does that nothing okay the limitations that Hollywood is setting for us mm -hmm. are decreasing little by little every single year it's like watching someone like chip away at Marvel yeah. where it's like it started as like this very plain thing where it's like this is it this is everything and now it's becoming something so beautiful with an entire life of its own which is very exciting I love it I guess for me it's very similar story I mean when I started even in voiceover they wanted to put me in a box mm -hmm. you know and it was she's Asian whatever Asian part we want to give it to her but here's the thing we have this stereotype this bias in our head of what we think Asian should be or sound like and then I sound like this. I grew up in Detroit. I learned European languages growing up. So I just have a different experience. And I was like, but I want you to send me on the commercial that asks for the girl next door. Mm -hmm. And also the video game character that looks for a woman of Asian descent. Mm -hmm. um, I can do both. I am not only. And now we're in that place where we can see those opportunities mm -hmm. come and they're getting more and more specific. Mm -hmm. I love that, you know, after a hundred plus years of Filipinos being here, they finally see us as a culture, <laughs> culinarily and in pop culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to give credit to you because you do casting and directing oh. <laughs> and you are like, you are part of that movement of change. 
that asks for us to represent ourselves authentically and, you know, cast for characters that are real three-dimensional beings in a 2D plane, um, but they're real mm -hmm. and they're authentic and that's cool and you're part of it, so yay. No, this ain't about me. I have to just, you know, honor that. <laughs> I do believe that it's really important that people behind the scenes that are working on all of these new projects that are coming out are also diverse because there is an authenticity to what they're um, writing about and putting into these uh, shows and characters that you know eventually go out in auditions for mm -hmm. all of us to uh, audition and be a part of. But um, I'd say that starting out, I mean, I've only been at my agency for like maybe a few years, like two years or so from when I started until now, like the BLM movements have been huge. I feel mm. like after like um, a lot of that um, happened and a lot of, there's a huge push for authenticity now that I'm starting to see a lot more characters created of all, all sorts of different mm -hmm. backgrounds, mm -hmm. really specific ones. Just recently I booked um, something that was, um, the character was just generically Asian but I think after I was cast, they specifically made her Vietnamese, which I thought That's was awesome. amazing. That's so yeah. cool. Because I never, you know, I mm -hmm. never see auditions for a Vietnamese character. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool that they decided to do that. Also, you know, there's, like you were saying, there's like so many different types of Asian people. We're, we're di you know, like, all, like we're anybody all mixed. else. Yeah. yeah. People are just different people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and like, I know that a lot of, uh, there's like, trends of like who's like popular at the time you'll see that in a lot of like ad stuff like yeah. <laughs> I don't sound anything like Aquafina I'm I'm happy that me you're sending either, it to girl. me because I'm Asian but um, I got the deep timber but <laughs> <laughs> she's very specific yeah. right so. yeah also like I to sort of like speak on that the fact that like Asian women sound different all across the board like all three of us sound vastly different mm -hmm. and I just think it's always so interesting when yeah, like a few years ago when it'd be like Asian woman, like they have a very specific idea, like mm -hmm. they want like the snickering little schoolgirl, and mm -hmm. I would talk and I'd be like, well, <laughs> right? I don't know if this one's for me, gang. <laughs> like, thanks, but I'll try. I grew up in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Every movie theater was in a casino, so I have years of secondhand smoke. Like, I don't know if I can do that, gang. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, I don't know. It's like it's such, it's such a low bar to just acknowledge us as human beings with lives and past, but it's exciting that they are now yeah. and that we can be like humans instead of just Asian. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like Pinocchio. I'm a real boy. Yeah, exactly. I'm a real boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the question is, you know, in addition to diverse casting, what else can be done in production, in storytelling to help continue the momentum? of representation that we are starting to see. And I will say starting because I feel like, you know, just to be seen as human, if it feels like such a monumental <laughs> leap, then we still have a long way to go mm -hmm. before it feels mainstream. Um, so what are you observing or what would you advise? What would you like to see? I would say just more diversity starting at the very top and all the way down, like just from the very bottom levels, just like, having more diverse crews like on mm -hmm. every single level. I mean, that's something that we're seeing in like the, the live action dubbing community where it's really, really comes in handy to have someone who is like from the country or is like, you know, of the nationality that the project is from because they can like give insight and um, avoid like mistranslations because mm -hmm. sometimes there's things that are like lost that are, might be colloquialisms or the significance of something, like there's cultural significance and mm -hmm. it's kind of like maybe thrown aside because um, there's, it's not malicious in any t yeah. intent. It's more or less just like, you know, you can't, you don't know what you don't know. They can offer context. Offer context, exactly. And I think that's just something so important is that we have so much to learn from each other constantly. And that I think just having a more diverse like crew as like as diverse as possible, because honestly it's just going to improve projects more and more and more because it's, yeah, it's like America's in a, mel a melting pot to begin with, and that's yeah. what our production staff should be because we learn from each other and improve each other. Absolutely. Santhi, what are your thoughts? Well put. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I, I totally agree with what you said, and, I mean, even if they're able to just have somebody um, on site mm -hmm. to, as to be the person that's like, okay, this is what that means, and just um, to have that kind of voice um, on hand throughout the production, I think that'll make it more cohesive, and um, it definitely helps that it, that you know you, they're not just going on something 
stereotypical, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. guess, in, in, in tone. So. Yeah, like a cultural advisor on set would sure. be yes. really, really helpful, especially like for difficult from like from like a range of positions too. Like they could help with pronunciation mm-hmm. or just offer context to like like uh, ceremonial events or things like that, mm-hmm. or just really across the board. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I also mm-hmm. think too, not just for like the dubbing community and anime, but also for original production. So mm-hmm. whatever content you're making, we were talking about this kind of before we started rolling, but it was the idea of like, I just want to see more stories featuring a diverse cast, Mm -hmm. featuring diverse storytelling. So all of those different worldviews that are not, I'm sorry, five guys who went to Harvard together. Um, You know, but we've never heard that story before, Retina. How are we supposed to? I'm sorry. Let me tell you about that time I went to Yale and I sang on the acapella team. Thank you. I and I, I don't mean to degrade any of it because we grew up on that kind of content, but just to see the story featuring people who look like us, who sound like us, who've had our experiences, and it doesn't have to be an Asian American story. It just happens to be they are friends who are Asian. Or just even just like, they just are Asian or just like, I don't know, like it doesn't have to be anything. They just exist. She's a waitress and she just happens to be Asian. It doesn't need to like come up as like a plot point every single time. Exactly. Literally just be like, I don't know, she's just, her name's like Bethany, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like I loved. I I don't know about you guys. I watched The Babysitters Club on Netflix. I am in love with that show. I'm so sad it got canceled, but I loved that it's just about a bunch of friends, and one of the girls happens to be Japanese American, and they never talk about it. But whenever they go to Claudia's house, they take off their shoes. Oh, mm-hmm. that's so I love sweet. That. They never yeah. talk mm-hmm. about it. They don't make a big deal about it. It's just what happens when you go to Claudia's house. And that's like. See, that's something that's just so specific, too, that, like, you know that someone on set has, uh, like, some experience with Mm -hmm. a Japanese-American household, Mm -hmm. where it's, like, yeah, it's, like, those little things that you're going to put in there if you have, like, a more diverse staff that otherwise you might miss, and it's just those tiny little details that really mean a lot. Like, I I recently just watched Bridgerton season two. We do love Bridgerton. We love Bridgerton, (laughs) and um, something that I was seeing a lot online was that um, a lot of um, Indian-Americans and just, like, Indian people in general were deeply, deeply moved by the fact that the girls were kept, kept referring to their father as Appa, mm-hmm. which is, yeah, like, like to me, that is just sort of like, oh, that's what they call their dad. But to them, it's like, you know, they grew up with that. Yeah. Like, it's deeply Why significant to them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that just so shows that someone, like, did their homework or that, like, they had someone who actually was of that culture. Like, it's so important. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, and the more of that we can see, the less that we have these conversations of, like, why don't we see this thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what'll help elevate the conversation, elevate content, you know, going forward. Being exposed to all of this media where uh, that um, showcases all these diverse Mm -hmm. uh, peoples, it makes it, I feel like it, you know, makes it more normalized. Mm -hmm. It's not so like, Mm -hmm. oh, this is a foreign concept kind of thing. And I feel like if you grow up with it, then it's, it doesn't have to be, we don't have to be precious about it. No. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's just about visibility. Just people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as we're seeing increased representation and everything, um, a lot of discourse has been like rising up and mm-hmm. a lot of people have been asking some like some questions, mm-hmm. which, you know, when we're having discussions, questions come up. Like that's just only a natural part of it. Um, and a lot of people are wondering like why it's important to do this and like why casting authentically and casting like just why that's important and why that matters so much because um especially like you know in our line of work i'm sure you guys have heard a lot of the things being like well it's voice acting shouldn't anyone be able to do it Mm -hmm. um and so just yeah like what do you what are your guys thoughts on that i definitely have thoughts i i mean i definitely have thoughts i think in the the olden days of voiceover Mm -hmm. when it was a very small pool of people um yeah everybody can do it Mm -hmm. but now we've sort of democratized the making of content. You can do this from all over the world, so why not take those voices and stories Mm -hmm. if they are available to you? One of the places where I struggle with is how specifically to cast, um, because sometimes I think we use it as a crutch. Mm -hmm. So not just a, yes, I wanna be diverse, but also an excuse if we can't find that person. Like, you know, oh, I tried. I tried looking for somebody who was, you know, half Syrian, a quarter Egyptian, part Japanese, and also worked at an in and out Mm -hmm. You know, 
and, and I couldn't find them. So I'm going to cast somebody else. I'm going to mm -hmm. cast my buddy. Um, and so I think we have to be very careful right now because we're in that like middle growing pain adolescence of representation in media mm -hmm. that we are thoughtful and deliberate but also flexible enough to make sure that if we can't find that specific thing that we're open to either changing the character or looking a little bit wider mm -hmm. so that we can still have the representation without just saying no out of hand because mm -hmm. it's too specific. Um, and I think also we just have to be open to having these conversations of why it's important because I feel like we're constantly having to justify ourselves because the people who are in leadership who are green lighting all of these projects are not necessarily reflective of our own mm -hmm. cultural upbringing. And so they don't know why it's important. They only know their point of view of how they experienced seeing Asian people in their lives. And that is very different to how we experienced it because we were in it. Mm -hmm. The best way that I have found to highlight why it's important and why it is happening is by highlighting how it feels when it's not happening. Oh. So a way that I've used to describe this to um, some friends, like not malicious people at all, but just people who are, don't understand and want to understand, is that um, you know, growing up, like um, I grew up in the early 2000s, and there were Asian characters. They were starting to pop up here and there, and that was hugely, hugely exciting for me because I was you know, this little Asian girl. It was in a town where I was like one of the only Asian mm -hmm. people I felt so othered constantly and like I didn't know what to do with myself. It felt like I didn't belong anywhere. I didn't know like how to act or how I shouldn't act or anything like that. And then I would see these Asian characters on TV and it meant the world to me. And it was like, I saw myself and I saw that I could be something. Mm -hmm. But then um, I was growing up with the internet and I would look up uh, the cast of it because I was like, oh wow, like this character is amazing. I love them so much. I want to be just like them. And then I would look it up and I would see, you know, a white woman behind mm -hmm. the voice that meant so much to me behind the character that I so solely identified with. And yep. as, it was heartbreaking yeah. because it felt like I wasn't allowed to be Asian. And then I finally found an outlet in which I could see myself mm -hmm. and feel valid. And when it's not authentic, it just feels like I'm not even allowed to be Asian. So true, so well put. And that is why, like, that's how I usually try and get people to like see it from that perspective where it's like, especially Asian actresses, yeah. like from this very specific viewpoint where it's like, you know, yeah, you grow up and you're like, you're told that you're supposed to be a specific person. And then you see, you know, like, you're like, oh, you're only Asian. Like so many people will only do that. Like that's sort of like an unfortunate truth with racism is that so many people will like just reduce you down to purely how you look and where your family is from. Mm -hmm. And so you're told you're Asian, you're Asian, you're just Asian. And then, you know, you get this mindset. You're like, okay, I, I'm, I'm Asian. I'm just Asian. Okay. And then like when you're an actor and you like, you see all of a sudden there's an Asian character, you're like, that's amazing. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, then you look it up and it's like, you're not even allowed to be Asian. You mm -hmm. still have to like sit down and yeah. like sit behind someone else. And it's, it's really disheartening. Yeah. And so the way that I've seen is like diverse casting is important because you never know, like you never know who's watching or who needs that representation or, you know, there's yeah. just so many people out there. We want to like, see ourselves reflected on screen. And when you were talking, it reminded me of like, which Barbie doll did you pick as a kid or which was your American girl doll or which was your Disney princess? And I always went to the one who was the most kind of brunette sort of Asian-ish looking because, mm -hmm. you know, this was before Mulan. And then when she came out, she, you know, there was some, there was some chatter around her authenticity as well. But mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a Disney princess who looks like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I, growing up, like that was a thing that people would like, nicknamed me as is Mulan because mm -hmm. that was like the one Asian the one Asian the person one Asian they've ever heard of. that I you know, mm -hmm. that, you know they could associate with me and like I mean luckily she has like amazing uh, characteristics mm -hmm. and traits but you know not that I am those traits but still you embody many like, of them you embody though. many of them <laughs> you're 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 amazing <laughs> but like I think um I don't know if this is on topic anymore but like growing up like um one of the characters characters that I, I really loved seeing on screen was uh, in Hook, uh, Rufio, mm -hmm. because he was just like this rowdy, like he was against um, 
this the Against usual type. Asian types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not just like studious and like well behaved. He is like out there like making moves, taking leadership, and you know like um, taking charge. And I thought that was really cool. And that's you know like that would be something to look. I mean, maybe not like always like against the man or anything like mm -hmm. that, but. You but know, it's empowering. Like, cool. yeah. 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 Just the fact that you can like take agency of yourself like that and feel empowered and, you know, make your own decisions and things like that. Like it's just, it's really, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And something also that I, I kind of want to speak on, again, I don't know if this is on topic either, but it's like, it's sort of weird. And like, it's very important that we continue having representation and more characters are coming out because mm -hmm. kind of like on the Mulan subject, it's, yeah, when there's only one Asian character in all of media, then that's who everyone kind of defaults you to, right? which can be kind of also not ideal. And then it's yeah. weird because, you know, I'm not fully Chinese, so mm -hmm. am I, do I get to claim her? Exactly, and so like, yes, yeah, same, like, I'm like, I'm half Japanese, and so people would be like, oh, you're like, like everyone would, I remember these like silly middle school tag posts that people would do on Facebook and it'd be like oh tag your friends and mm -hmm. like there would be you know be all the white princesses and like they would spend a really long time thinking like oh which of my friends embodies which trait like oh maybe she's like more like demure so she's more of a Cinderella and then for me it was always Mulan yep always Mulan yep. <laughs> and I'm like yeah I mean I, I I there's a lot of similarities between me and Mulan but it like also becomes that thing where you're like are you picking this because I am headstrong and brave and loyal to my family, or are you picking it because I'm Asian? Yep. Like, did you consider all those traits about me? Like, did you think maybe since I really like reading, would I be Bells? But, but yeah, so it's like, that's why like increased representation is important because you can't just reduce an entire race to, to one token and be like, we did it! Right? Yeah. Right? Especially when it's like of a different period and different like, mm -hmm. you know, like the all the culture aspects, great. And like, but... You know, it just feels very, like, foreign because it's, like, in this other, like, mm -hmm. time period where something, like, Turning Red is, like, very uh, modern. Familiar, and, yeah. And, and really cool because, like, you know, they're just... They're, they're just, just kids. kids. Yeah, they're, they're just kids out. being kids. Which is super cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, my it's, God. Yeah. So much. The story isn't banked off of, like, it being exotic or foreign or, like, anything like that. It's just sort of being, like... No, it's just, this is her life. Yeah. This is her life and her experiences. And yeah. that's so, that's so refreshing to see. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to feel seen, mm -hmm. you know? And that, I think that just recognition of like, oh my God, they get me. Mm -hmm. They get me. I had crying feelings because I'm like, I remember all of those cringy teenager <laughs> feelings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, your mom is embarrassing you and you just want to go like, you know, debate who your favorite boy is in the boy band and all of those things. Like, it's so real. And it's not about her being an Asian kid. It's yeah. yeah, like, and that's like another thing, sort of speaking on like just female representation mm -hmm. as well, where, yeah, it's like, she didn't really have a love interest in that movie nope. and she didn't need to. It was about her own self journey. And like, yeah. I think that was so important. Like I would have killed to have that as a kid just to like see like her struggling with like finding herself and like finding her own like self worth outside of her family and with her friends and like establishing herself as like, as like a blooming adult. Like that's so cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's super empowering. Mm -hmm. So as Asian Americans and growing up in, uh, uh, Asian households, how did you have the the conversation <laughs> with your parents about wanting to go into the arts, and how did they react to it? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go hide now. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, I'm only giggling because because it started so early with me I wasn't even born yet that my name like I I go by Jenny that's how everyone knows me but my full name is Jennifer and there's a reason behind that and that's because my mom originally my mom my mom is white and she's from America she was like oh I think I want to name her Jenny I think Jenny will suit her and my dad said mm, no <laughs> my dad is Japanese um and he said let's name her Jennifer because you've never had a doctor whose name is Jenny. It starts wow. early. He knew you were going to be a doctor. He already knew. <laughs> like he, needed, he needed to give me a first name that was worthy <laughs> of a doctor. You want a respectable Do medical name. Exactly. Dr. Jennifer Yokobori, not Dr. Jenny Yokobori. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that sound, sounded better. And what that's a big difference that yeah. is. It's, it is. It, it's very dignified. <laughs> and 
still haven't got that medical school school yet, but I played a doctor a couple times. Hey, you know, you have played a doctor. I played a medic. <laughs> Here we go. That counts, right? <laughs> My dad was the first Japanese immigrant, like, of his family, I'm pretty sure, at least in my immediate family, mm -hmm. that he grew up, lived in Tokyo for even, like, many years into adulthood. I think he moved out here when he was, like, 30 or 40 or something. And so he fancied himself very much, like, as a progressive because he wanted, he's like, oh, yeah, like, my American daughter, she's going to have, like, American goals and she can do like, whatever she wants. But then also, like, you know. But also be a dutiful. But also be a dutiful mm -hmm. Japanese daughter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like when I wouldn't like certain Japanese foods growing up, he was like, you know, all good Japanese kids like this. Oh, yeah. And I would be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so, you know, like it was an unspoken thing mm -hmm. where it was just sort of like, yeah, my American daughter, you can do whatever you want. Here's a book on anatomy. <laughs> You're four years old. And I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, it was like, it was an unspoken thing. And my experience is a little bit different because my dad had Alzheimer's. And so he got sick around mm. the time I was like six, like he got diagnosed when I was four. He started really like um, deteriorating when I was six or seven. And so I never had really have that conversation mm -hmm. because he wasn't cognizant for it, but it was definitely like, you know, it's still, it's something that lingers over me yeah. still. My dad passed when I was 18. And so it's kind of like a matter of always kind of like checking back in with myself where it's like, you know he would have wanted you to be a doctor. <laughs> and it's weird. It's a heavy weight that's kind of put on our shoulders at a really young age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like we always have, like, a, a mini versions of our parents, like, in oh. our head all oh, the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. completely. Which is completely annoying. Like, can you quiet down, please? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for me, like, talking... <sighs> so they really didn't really want... They didn't... They let me do the acting stuff in high school because it was just like an extracurricular. As long it's as your grades were good. Looks yeah. good on college applications. <laughs> and it's not like a serious thing. But then mm -hmm. uh, when it came to college admissions, um, my parents are not uh, tech savvy. So I, when I was filling out my forms and I uh, put down that I wanted to study uh, theater, they couldn't do anything about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so like, they didn't know until like, you know, like acceptance letters were coming in. And she was like, what is this? You have to change it. And I was like, all right, I'll do that later. And then I didn't. <laughs> and then she was like, but I heard other people can change their majors. So I was like, well, They I said, no, the computer caught on fire. It was the craziest thing. <laughs> it was all grayed out. I couldn't push yeah. the button. <laughs> and so, like, I just continued with it. But, you know, like, parents are, like, my parents are, um, they fled uh, Vietnam mm -hmm. uh, and immig immigrated to here because of the war. And so, like, they've had a work really hard to um, make a living and like just surviving. And so like, of course they wanted me and my brothers to uh, get jobs that we, where we wouldn't have to do a lot of manual labor, yeah. you know, like have good income, live a good life, not have to worry about money all the time. And I understand that, mm -hmm. but. Um, <sighs> when the muse calls. Yes. <laughs> I felt like this yeah. is where I belong. Exactly. And like for many years, like well, my parents used to own a restaurant, and I worked there a, a, a lot while I was pursuing um, voiceover. And uh, it gets hard because they would always constantly be in my ear, being like, "Okay, well, why don't you study pharmacy on the side? You know, <laughs> like self-study, take the test." And so I tried, and I was like, "I just, I don't have the the brains for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this part of my brain does not work." And like also like other relatives that are always like, when are you gonna do real acting then? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm just uh, doing that acting thing. Right. And I'm like, yes, yeah. this is a serious job. And I feel like they still kind of don't feel like it's a s real thing, but. Now like, it's too I late, can, the ship has sailed. Yeah. <laughs> the computer blew up already. You can't change it a yeah. major now. <laughs> yes. yes, but you know, I feel like the more like I work and the more that I, um, get under my belt, it kind of validates what I've chosen to do. Like, not like yeah. I have to prove myself to mm -hmm. them or anything like that, but I guess it makes me feel like no, that. No, absolutely. No, that's, no. that rings very true it is to real. home. Mm -hmm. It is real. I mean, I'm also the daughter of immigrants. They came to this country. They wanted me to have a secure life. They wanted the, you know, check all the STEM boxes. And my mom is a retired physician. My dad was an engineer. The expectations were high. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, like, when I was a teenager, I was like, I want to go to school for theater. And they're like, over my dead body and yours. 
you know, this is not going to happen. And so I, I caved. I studied business. I went to school. I got multiple degrees. And then I had a career, you know, in corporate America, in marketing. And it was fine. Mm-hmm. And I did well. And, you know, I could see myself pursuing that, that track. But also, the muse, she speaks. Life has other plans sometimes. Right? Yeah. She speaks. And at one point, I just realized I'd look down the hallway and I'd see, you know, the corner office and the person who inhabited it and what they were like and other women who were kind of moving up the ranks in, in those lines of work. And I just, I didn't want their lives. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, well, if I don't want that life and I've checked all of the good little Asian girl boxes, what do I want for myself? And it was acting. It was the thing that I wanted when I was young. Mm-hmm. And so I, there was an opportunity to let myself have that dream. And I said, if I don't jump now, I will never do it. I will take another nine to five, get a, get a paycheck every two weeks, 401k job. And then I will always be sad somewhere in the back of my head that I didn't try. It just becomes a matter of who you're living for. And when you're finally out on your own, like it's like, who else am I doing this for? Mm-hmm. It's like at the end of the day, you have to answer to yourself and you might as well make yourself happy. (laughs) Absolutely. And even though, you know, sometimes mom wants me to get a real job Mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes the the titas and the titos are are, um, pleasantly concerned. Um, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all right. You know, and I get to be kind of the the auntie with the interesting job so that makes me happy <laughs> I, I i am also the the aunt with the very interesting <laughs> i'm aunt jenny <laughs> yep <laughs> except of course my nieces i love them so much they're the center of my universe but also oh, yeah. they're like they think everything else is cooler than me like i'll be like hey i play some barbies and they're like that's nice aunt jenny and i'm like i'm a miraculous ladybug and they're like that's nice aunt jenny and i'm like i voice a sanrio character that's nice aunt jenny i'm like I'm on The Simpsons. I am the youngest cast member of <laughs> legendary comedy series, The Simpsons. They're like, that's nice and Jenny. <laughs> I'm like, I love you. They but, have no context. Oh, you wound me. <laughs> oh, you wound me. But yeah, it's just, you know, yeah, it's, it's part of the Asian experience is having familial expectations and having them just they hang over your head like an anvil they sometimes. They really do sometimes. And I think it's part of us just, first of all, allowing ourselves to um, not let them weigh us down Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to pursue because this is the thing that we cannot not do. Exactly. You should be really proud of all those titles because they're super cool. I feel like that's living our own dreams, you know? I know. You keep posting those things about like the Sanrio characters coming out. I'm like, I want those. (laughs) (laughs) They're really cool. I want one of those plushies. (laughs) I love them so much. You guys sound so cute in that time, Rio show. So cute. Sin Merle just got released as a, like a, in, like a little tanuki costume, so he's a little raccoon, like he's a little Japanese raccoon. And I Stop bought that it. like right away. Stop I got the email it. from like the Sanrio marketing. I'm like, but, <laughs> like mine reserved mm-hmm. for Doctor Jenny Yokobori. For Doctor Jennifer, <laughs> Doctor Jennifer Yokobori. I found out one of my cousins pursued acting. Oh. And this is, you know, like we didn't really stay in touch after we, you know, growing up. And then he randomly he went to school with a friend of mine. I know my nieces have started like pursuing artistic endeavors too. And I'm like, ah. I know. I, I think I've become like the reason why my nieces are like, if they don't want to pursue a career in, in you know, medicine, nursing, <laughs> yeah. like join the family business. Um, you know, oh, the Tita Ratana became an actor. I know that's the pressure I feel too. <laughs> where like my nieces are like becoming teenagers mm-hmm. and like one of them is like very interested in ballet and I'm always just kind of like nervously like looking at my sister and I'm like because yeah she'll be like Aunt Jenny is an artist Aunt Jenny is an actress I'm like just leave me out of this, leave me out of this. <laughs> I don't want to in- invoke the wrath of <laughs> like no my sister's gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time you're you're both like you yep. know, positive influences for these little ones. Absolutely. I mean, I still, I will, I will encourage your, your little growing heart mm-hmm. as much as I can. But we also reserve the right to be terrified and worried for you because we love you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Because yes. we also, we know how hard it is to live as an oh artist. Oh my gosh. And like oh. the hills and valleys that it leads. And so like, it's hard to watch, you know, like your younger relative enter li- that life and you're like this is this life is really hard yeah, and there's it's not gonna- all the glitz and glam and no. nothing prepares them unless they actually go pursue it themselves nothing you say will per- will prepare them no mm-hmm. cuz 
like, I mean, yeah, we're, we're all actors. We've all, growing up, we all heard a million times, like, it's really hard. There's going to be feasts and famine. It's like, there's going to be periods where you're like, you're dirt poor, just eating top ramen. And, mm-hmm. and like, I remember being a teenager and my experience was just sort of like, no, I still want it. I still want it despite everything. And the, they, had, they came true. Like, there were nights where I was hungry and I'm just oh, sort yeah. of, I'm just like, oh boy, it's just, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did the things, and yet we're afraid for other people to do the things. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta have that survival job, really. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just jump straight into it and no. like, suddenly like take off. Mm-hmm. It, you know, like any anybody Except that's for like an overnight <laughs> success is not overnight. Yeah, ten years. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what they said. I remember uh, my professor from college saying that. Okay, I want you to write down uh, goals and like list all the things that you want to achieve in your career and then give yourself 10 years to do that. I was like, 10 years? 10 and at years? that age, 10 years is forever. 10 years yeah. is, you're, you've are you barely been alive for 10 years. Right? <laughs> and he was so right. Yeah. <laughs> took, took, I feel like it took me 10 years to kind of like get to a point where I'm like, all right, I can do this full time now without being scared. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not even 10 years out of high school and like I'm finally just now starting to feel like a human being. Like it felt like everything else was like this weird <laughs> tutorial and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm coming into real consciousness. I'm like, Oh, wait, now I'm like a person, like a whole person. <laughs> it's true, though. Mm-hmm. I feel like it takes us time to just kind of settle into whoever we're going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I think of any young person who wants to pursue this career or any creative career, really, in general, it's like it can't just be a whim. It ha- you have to want it more you than you want to. anything else in the world mm-hmm. because otherwise it's going to be easy to give up because times are really hard, and when you're starting – you feel like you're in the pit of despair. I mean, like you're trying so hard and you're like, I know there's something here and I know that I'm like Mm -hmm. working really, really hard, but just no one's going to give me a chance. And unless you want it more than anything else in the entire world, it's not, it's just not going to happen. And it's a matter of like, even when you're feeling at your absolute lowest, you still push and you find those opportunities and you show up for workshops and you find ways to keep improving yourself. And if you're not getting books, then you figure out why you're not getting booked. You go to coaches, you listen back to your auditions, you're reading books, you're taking classes, just you have to want it more than anything else. It's not just something to be like, it's not a career that you should ever choose because you want to be rich or famous. <laughs> yep. Yep. Absolutely not. <laughs> those, are, those come secondary. Very, very few of us are rich. <laughs> or famous. Yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah, it's the very, thing you cannot not do. Very poetic. It's just, it's the only thing your soul really wants. It's the mm-hmm. only thing that makes you feel like you. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's so... Because it's so, it's true. so yeah. true. Oh, man. I can't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I'll give the practical advice, which is, um, if this is the thing you're choosing for yourself, to, you know, to cultivate a mindset of growth and learning because this is a business that is constantly rejecting you so and by rejecting it means they ghost you oh yeah so you got to be okay with that and you got to know that if they're ghosting you no skin off your back you move on with your day you know if you're getting rejected no skin off your back you're going to learn from that and you're going to keep going and you're going to learn from the process and trust the process and just keep on trucking. I think this is this is a marathon and this is a game of graceful tenacity more than anything else. And if it's not there for you, it's okay to say, this is not for me, I'm a peace out and mm-hmm. go join the family business. Exactly, it doesn't make you any less of a person. Yeah. It like, it mm-hmm. makes you like, it's a good de- like it's a good decision. If this isn't the thing, then it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be anyone besides the person that you want to be. Yep. Mm-hmm. Those are amazing <laughs> question uh, answers. Uh, but I, I I totally agree that if um, you got to put in the work, mm-hmm. uh, practice is like huge. Um, I f- find that like you said, like if. Y- if you're not getting the results that you would like, then uh, you got to have a real talk with yourself, like, oh, how do I improve? What do I need improvement on? And it does help if you go to, like, a coach or have, like, a group of friends that you work with and, you know, take in their feedback, 
work hard on like improving in those areas that you want to be in or if also just find out you know where do you naturally lean towards mm -hmm. and like really go for you know go mm -hmm. towards that like you know everybody's um, experience and voice is different and um, that'll lean you towards different facets of voiceover there, there's not just like you know like only animation or only commercials there's so many different routes that you can go that would be suitable for you so um, I it comes down to like practicing and like getting to really know yourself. Yeah, and just, yeah. Yep. I'll have another piece of advice too is just mm -hmm. be kind. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's the best piece of advice I can give to anyone, regardless or not, whether they're pursuing acting. It's just like, I don't know, it's like, a very, it's a classic for a reason. Like, be kind and treat others how you would want to be treated. Absolutely. Like, it's true in life and it's true in acting too because also the circles are small. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're mean to someone or like you try to like manipulate them mm -hmm. or bully them, like you're going to get back what you put out. Yep. Tenfold. Absolutely. And yeah, it's just, it's not going to make you look like a bigger person. It's just going to make people not want to work with you. And so just, there's, there's no good that can come from it. So just be kind, be yeah. radically kind. I honestly like, being kind is the most rebellious thing you can do. <laughs> it's the best advice. I love that. Randy and Rachel asked us a hard question. <laughs> they do. They ask the hard questions. I blame them. Uh, <laughs> How do I name everybody in my life? Exactly. I, I, I mean, I, at the very beginning, some of the people who kind of just helped me know that this is a possibility I mean, first, my mom is a huge inspiration because she freaking immigrated here and gave me life. Um, and how hard is it to leave your country with not that much money and n absolute n trust that it's going to be okay somehow? So, you know, I, I give a lot of props to my parents for doing that. But um, Leia Salonga was like the first person who looked like me, who kind of had my background, who was doing something that was not in medicine or <laughs> engineering or, you know, any of those roles and I think she had studied medicine at one point and then she discovered she had a voice um but that was like oh wait I can do this and then again Queen Sandra Oh um you know who were doing work that was interesting and engaging and not necessarily about being Asian just there happened to be Asian mm -hmm. and killing it so those, I guess those are two of my inspirations, but there are so many, I like, I just, we're just going to put a scroll on the bottom of the oh, screen. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes, like it's going to be like a newsroom. Like just all of our <laughs> teachers, every, every voice actor mm -hmm. ever. I mean, the late, great Mel Blanc and June Foray. Oh, yes. The, I mean, that, those are the people who inspired me to get into voice acting specifically, because I didn't know that one person could be all of that. And that is, that is ex essentially how I discovered voice acting existed. I mean, follow that. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> let's see, like starting from like childhood and things like that. I mean, there's there's so many. I feel like I am just a patchwork quilt of everyone who I've ever thought was cool. <laughs> um, like really, really little Kathy Rigby. She was the Peter Pan that I saw on Broadway oh, that right. changed my life forever. I've seen her like three, four times because I just love her and I she's transcendent. Jackie Chan. Yes. Jackie Chan. <laughs> He is just, I mean, he's amazing. I feel like a lot of us, like, we look to him. He's like, he's an Asian actor who came to Hollywood and he was prominent and people paid attention to him. And then he had an animated series, mm -hmm. which was just so cool. Lauren Tom, for sure. Oh, Lauren Tom is amazing. Lauren Tom, like, she's she's an icon. She's a legend. She's yeah. incredible. Like, she's, she's and she Amy, does everything. She's Amy Wong from Futurama, which yeah. I watched every single night against my parents' permission. <laughs> I would sneak out of my room and I would turn on the giant CRT TV and I would watch Futurama and there was a girl who looked my, like me. There was Amy Wong. Right. And she was silly and rebellious and spunky and she wasn't like an obedient Asian daughter. She was outside of the norm and that was so exciting and Lauren Tom plays her to perfection and Lauren also plays number three in Codename Kids Next Door, which is just the coolest. Because, yeah, Codename Kids Next Door, best thing ever. Yeah. And the people who inspire me today are like, it's, it's you guys. It's true. <laughs> it's my friends. Like, I feel like you guys are, like, my biggest inspirations. Like, you guys, like, Zeno, like, Genshin crew. Right. Like, like Erica Mendez, Susie yeah. Young, Alex, 
Oh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Kahoy? Kahoy. Kahoy Dao. <laughs> Wait, who's that? I, th I think he voices um, Albedo. Okay, okay. Albedo? Alfredo? Alfredo. Alfredo. Okay. Alfredo. Alfredo. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. I look up to my peers the most. Absolutely. Like, I am so regularly inspired by you guys. And, like, that's I just something... love cheering you guys on. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I love being in voiceover because it never feels like I lose. It just feels like my friends win. And that's the coolest thing ever. It's like when I read something and I'm like, oh, I hope Xanthi gets this. Or like, mm -hmm. like, oh boy, I hope Brittany got to read for this. Just like, it's, it's that. Like, yeah, it's like, I learned from, family. yeah, like we I learned are. from your guys' performances. I learned from you just being yourselves and like, like just hanging out with you and just learning to be a better person. Like, yeah, I look up to you guys a lot now. I do love that the VO community is very close and that, um, you don't ever have to feel alone when navigating through things, mm -hmm. especially with like, um, you know, like contracts and things yeah, like that. Yeah, the business is the like, business. Yeah, and because like otherwise it's like, where do you learn all of this? Um, you know, like, uh, is this right? Is it wrong? Right. I don't know. You know, you just kind of go into it and you just have to like accept it as it is. And then until somebody tells you maybe that's not how it should be. Yeah. So I definitely like look to my peers for, for guidance Absolutely. in that regard. Um, I think in my early life, I, uh, my parents like watched a lot of um, Hong Kong movies like mm -hmm. translated into mm -hmm. like Vietnamese or like with English subtitles. Korean dramas. And so I definitely <laughs> like had that growing up, like lots of strong women, like they can kick butt and like run a household and do everything. Um, these like super women, yeah. it felt like. Uh, I um, watched a lot of Power Rangers, so Tui Trang, like... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Johnny Young Bosch. <laughs> Johnny Young yeah. Bosch, too, yeah. Because, like, they were, like, the the cool uh, Asian kids. Yeah, the show. true. So I would wake up, like, you know, 6 a.m. on Saturday mornings to watch oh that. And I don't know. I just, I love our peers so much. So much. Everyone's so inspiring. Like, I don't know, like, I, yeah, I aim to be, like, as graceful as Retina, like, as kind as Xanthi, like, as, like, just forward about who I am like Alex and Coy just yeah. like I don't know I just want to be you when I grow up I want to be you guys when <laughs> I grow up I want to be as strong as you I feel like you you've been very um at least uh you you put on a lot of um like uh charity fundraisers mm -hmm. and stuff like that's a lot to organize to like help um raise money and awareness for different topics and I I, I applaud you for putting the work Thank together you. for that like that that takes so much work to and to put together and like to also like be active on social media in with really serious topics because that's really hard to do too. Yeah, yeah and you, mean, you do it very well. Thank you. I mean, like I I don't know. As, again, like I just aim to follow the example of my amazing peers. It's like also like yeah, Gray Delisle is amazing. Oh, she yeah. is just I I love Gray. <laughs> she is a queen. She is a, she is amazing. She <laughs> yeah. is so damn talented, and mm -hmm. she's also just like so unapologetically herself and it's yes. incredible to watch her do that and she's just very much sort of like yeah this is me I'm funny I know I am I'm mm -hmm. beautiful I know I am <laughs> you're welcome and yeah. like that's so incredible I love Gray um, yeah I really hope to meet her one day she's so wonderful there's so many creators out there and I think there are still so many more stories to be told mm -hmm. and I hope we get to tell them and help others to tell them as yeah. well yeah